Hey everybody, welcome to Trapped. If this is your first time here, do me a favor, go ahead and click that subscribe button because we're going to be doing great things in the future. Um, if you're returning, appreciate it. Great to have you on as a subscriber. This video, I've, uh, I've been asked by a few guys about how to get started in trapping. So this video is going to be stripped down, basic information on how to get started. Um, it's going to be a series, so I was actually out here for probably three hours last night trying to film this, and it's a lot harder than what you guys probably realize because once you've got so much experience and so many years into trapping, then what I need, what I feel that I need, is completely different than what you need to get started. So I, I would get to start talking about stuff and I would get off, you know, and it just, I had to, if you see me pick up this piece of paper, I had to basically write out a script for this. So that's what this is. So without any further ado, well, let me just say, if, if you guys are already experienced trappers, you know, if you want to watch this, great, but it's not going to be exciting. It's, I don't expect to get a lot of views on any of this because it's, it's basic information. But I can remember when I got started trapping, I didn't have anybody to ask. I went to YouTube and there are not any, very few good basic videos that explain anything. And I'm going to try to go in depth as possible so this might get kind of long. Let me make sure I'm recording. I am recording. That's good. So, uh, you know, if you don't want to watch, that's fine. Don't give me a thumbs down, please. You know, if you don't want to watch, then, you know, I'm going to get on to better things eventually. But for, you know, the foreseeable future, this is what I'm going to do is some stripped down basic. What do you need to get started into trapping to help some guys out? So, and a lot of this is my opinion. It is not, there's not a textbook on this stuff. So, you know. The very first thing, if you want to start trapping, the first thing you need to do is to go and take your state's trapper's education program. I mean, a lot of them can be done online, you can do it from home, but you need to know the laws in your state where you're going to be trapping at. I have seen, like I'm in Ohio, so our laws state that if you're trapping coyotes, you don't need a fur taker's permit. You do not need to go through trapper education. Well, guess what? There are guys that just go and they buy any trap they want and they will buy uh, snares and they don't know how to set them, don't know what's legal. I had a guy that gave me some traps that were like wolf sized beaver sized traps. You know, our law in Ohio states at, at the most, as long as you've got three swivel points, a six inch jaw spread. These traps were a six and a half inch jaw spread and they had never been in the dirt but uh, this guy had been taking them out and just setting them at places where he'd seen coyotes just setting them on the ground. What are you going to catch? You're, you're going to catch your neighbor's cat or you're going to catch somebody not paying attention walking along and you're going to break their toe or something. You know, it probably wouldn't break it but you're going to hurt somebody. So that's why I say, even if it's not required, if, if all you're going to do is target coyotes and you don't have to have a fur taker's permit, do everybody a favor and at least take your trapper's education program. It's free. It don't cost a dime. Sorry if you guys hear some background noise. My heater's on out here. I'm in my fur shed. Um, that's where all my tools are at and I figured it'd be the best place to do this. So step one is going to be take your trapper's education program and along with that I would recommend that you get to know your state trappers association or join. I mean I have learned so much from guys that are in my trappers association. I'm part of OSTA. I'm a member of the National Trappers Association, uh, Fur Takers of America and uh, Sportsman's Alliance. You know they definitely fight for us. So, you know, join those organizations. 
or at least go to the conventions, go to the meetings. We have regional meetings. Go to those. I mean, they're completely open to the public. You can, you can learn a lot. And a lot of times you can find guys that are neighbors to you and you never even knew it. And if you're brand new starting off, you know, a lot of these guys are willing to take somebody along. And they will teach you step by step. You can learn, you can cut out years of learning curve by going out with somebody that's already experienced. So, step one is get your trapper's license or your trapper's education in and go to your state trapper's association. Those guys are great. Um, number two, we're going to get into gear. What gear do you need to buy? Because this can be overwhelming. There is so much stuff out there. But what's awesome about trapping is there's so much stuff that you can make on your own. So I'm, <laughs> you know, you're probably thinking the first thing I'm going to tell you to get is your traps. No. The first thing you need to have, because you need to realize, when you set a trap for a raccoon, for if you're targeting skunks, possums, coyotes, whatever, You've got feral cats, you've got barn cats running around out there. You've got stuff that you're going to catch that you don't want to harm. And it doesn't hurt the animal getting caught in the trap. But you need a way to release it. I've never, I've caught quite a few cats, but I have never caught a cat that was friendly when it's in a trap. So the first thing you need to buy or make is going to be a release pole. You can, this one right here is very easily made. It is, it's plastic coated cable, PVC pipe. You've got a clothesline tensioner and like a, uh, like a lawnmower motor puller thing. And I mean, it's, it's great. You know, you catch a cat, you, you know, I'd say, yeah, like I've, I've released a lot of raccoons this year just because the price isn't very high on them. And if they weren't great looking coons, I turn them loose. You know, at what's the point in taking them if they're not going to bring me any money? So the first thing you need to have is a way to release animals you do not want to catch. The next thing is you need to think about what you're targeting. If you're just getting started and you don't care, you know, you, you might just, I mean, the easiest thing to catch out there is raccoons. So, you know, you need traps for that animal. You need, but. First, you need to figure out what you want to catch. So you need to buy traps. Now, we're going to go more into depth into the traps in future episodes. But, uh, you know, so you've got, you know, if you're going to go after coyotes, you're going to want to get something good, you know, a big number two MB 550s, Duke 550s, big, you know, coil spring traps. And get used to calling them coil springs. Don't call them a foothold. Don't call them a leg hold. They're a coil spring trap. That's what they are. They have these coil springs on them. Coil spring traps. Now, you've got, if you're going water trapping, going after mink muskrats. Oh, that was the GoPro that just fell down. Sorry. Going after mink muskrats. Body grip traps. All the guys just call them Cono Bears. The Cono Bears are brand. This is a body grip trap. Uh, very simple. You know, set them like this. And, you know, something swims through it or walks through it. But those are going to be for mink, muskrats. They'll hold a coon, but they got to be anchored right. We'll get into that in the future. Body grip traps come in all different sizes. This would be for like a mink and muskrat. This would be for, you know, this is a 220. If you're looking at smaller beavers, otter. If you are, so I have to keep getting out of the frame, guys. If you're going after raccoons, these are awesome. This is a dog proof trap. You know, once you got it set, this one needs some work done on it. But put the bait goes inside. Coon comes up, they're called a dog proof because a canine cannot set these off because they do not have an opposable thumb. Your standard dog proofs are a pull trigger. 
they reach down in there, they're getting the bait, they pull it out, get a little mouthful, reach down in there again, they grab a hold of the trigger with the bait, they pull up, and that spring catches right across the foot. Now holds them there until you come and decide whether you want to keep him or turn him loose. You've got long spring traps, you got so many different traps. Like I said, we're, we'll go more into depth on traps in the future, but second thing you need to get is your traps. Now, yeah, one of the questions that was asked to me is, what do I need to budget to get into trapping? Well, that, that depends on your budget and what type of footwork you want to do, because yeah, you, you can go and you can go to F&T, if you don't know what that is, fntpost.com, uh, I believe, is their website. It's a, it's a trapper's website where you can buy traps. They have uh, starter kits available for trapping and for fur handling. So you can, any, any you know, Minnesota trap line products, any Pretty much any trapping website is going to have starter kits that you can buy that's going to have pretty much everything you need to get started. But I'm just kind of breaking it down and going through what you need. So, once you got the traps, we'll say you're going after fox and coyotes. Once you have your traps, you know, this is how it's going to come. It's going to come with the length of chain and the trap. You need a way to stake that trap down and to keep the animal from being able to take off with it. You need to be able to hold that animal where you're at. Now you've got different options. You can buy or make your own rebar stakes, which you need. If you're going to do rebar for, for coyotes, where are they at? Somewhere. If you want to do rebar stakes for coyotes, at the minimum, you need these little butterfly anchors. What these do, you cross stake. You'll have two stakes in the ground. You'll have another one that goes in here. That way when a coyote pulls up, he's trying to pull against two stakes. And they should not go anywhere. Muddy ground, they're still going to pull up. What I recommend, what I use religiously, get these from F&T, Wolf Fang Steaks. You know, these things you can get, I don't know what they go for a dozen, I buy them by the hundred. They're $44 do, or for a hundred, $44, $45. And uh, I mean, that's like less than 50 cents a trap. It's not bad, they're disposable. Yeah, you can, if it's stuck in the ground, you can cut it off here. I usually try to pull them. I'll, I'll hook my four-wheeler. You can watch in my other videos. You can see where I, how I pull my stakes. I'll hook my four-wheeler winch to them, pull them out of the ground. Some of them make it. Some of them don't. Some of them bend up and fold up, but it's like 45 cents. I'm not worried about it. So once you get your traps, you need a way to stake them down. That's the same way with your your body grip traps or whatever. If you're doing one and a half for a coon or muskrat. You need a way to keep that trap from taking off with the animal, or the animal will take off with the trap. The trap ain't going anywhere on its own. So uh, once you got that and you've got your your anchors, next thing you need to think about is trap prep, preparation supplies. This is another thing that brings up a lot of questions. You know, the old school way of doing it, and the way I do most of my traps still is dye and wax. But when I buy these traps, if I buy them brand new, they come coated in an oil to keep them from rusting. So step one, what you need to do, and you can do just this step with brand new traps. Get your traps. The way I prefer to do it is I take them and I put them in the dishwasher. Everybody says, oh, my wife's going to yell at you. You know what? Who cares? You don't get yelled at. I don't get yelled at. I'll clean the dishwasher out when I'm done. It doesn't hurt anything. It's very hot water, high pressure water. Washes all that oils and all that stuff off of it. Does great. So you can, I have no issue with getting a brand new dozen traps in a box, throwing them in the dishwasher, 
take them out the next day, stick them in the ground, set them, and let them go that first season, let them build up a little bit of coat of rust. Which, you know, just take my word for it. But uh, other trap prep methods, you know, once you have a slight coat of rust on these traps, you want to dye them, and I don't have a fresh bag here, but like your logwood dye, if you want to do the work, go out and you can collect a bunch of walnut hulls, boil those in some water, pull the bag out with walnut hulls, and then boil your traps in there for a little bit. And then uh, once you get your traps dyed, then you get paraffin wax. I would recommend to start at least five to six pounds of wax because if you're going to have a metal bucket, you know, you're going to need a good bit of wax to cover that in a bucket. So starting off, you're going to need at least five to six pounds of wax. Um, other methods, there's guys that paint them. I'm going to try doing that this year with some traps. I've never tried it. Um, use it, mix acetone and I think Rust-Oleum paint. Dip your traps in that, let them hang outside, let them dry. You can use a uh, full metal jacket, F&T sells that. You can use Zepp's floor wax or something somewhat comparable to full metal jacket. So I've heard, not saying it's the same thing if anybody wants to jump on my bones for that, but I've heard it's very similar. So there's multiple ways, you can spray paint them and full metal jacket them, but you want some type of protective coating on the trap because yes it, it's, it doesn't make sense that you want to get a coat, of wax, a coat of rust on the traps first before you dye them and then you don't want them to rust anymore and that's, that's basically what it is. You want the rust there because just bare metal is not going to hold any dye and the reason for the dye is to me Let's say a, a coyote comes along and scratches a little bit of dirt off the top of this trap. And you missed him. He did not get caught. Well, he uncovered a little piece of that jaw. I'd much rather that little piece of that jaw be black than to be a shiny metal down there that he can see and be like, well, what's that? Because then a coon's going to come along and he's going to see that shiny metal and he's going to dig it all the way out. So that's why you want to dye your traps. So trap prep. Uh, next on the list, uh, I, have, I already discussed the starter kits. Um, you know, those are a good way to go if you can afford it. Like I said, you you can do it. Depends on your budget. If you want to spend a couple hundred bucks, get you a starter kit. If you want to spend fifty bucks, you can go to conventions. You can go to, like I said, your state. That's why I said to get get in with your state trappers association because we have you know at least a couple meetings. Um, Per year and there's always tailgaters there. There's guys there that are selling used traps and you can go there and you can get some killer deals on some used traps. You know, and you might even meet some guys that are like, you know, hey, if you're just getting started off, I've got some traps I'm not using, you can borrow for this year, and you don't have a dime wrapped up in it. You know, because we're we're trying to get guys into this. You know, that's the future of trapping is to keep people involved. And it's not a, there's not a lot of us anymore. So we need to get the younger guys involved, bring in new trappers constantly. Um, so you've got your traps, you've got a way to anchor them down, you've got a way to release caught animals, your traps are prepped, they're ready to go, what's next? What do I need? You're going to need bait and lures. Now, I'm not picking favorites over anybody. Well, it's just what I've got sitting here. You got a bait. If we had smell o vision I would uh, open that up and let you smell it. This is Hoosier Trapper Supplies Top Dog. I use a lot of that. It is a great bait. I use a lot of Jeff Dunlap stuff. Uh, Clint Locklear, he has a great product, product line. There's a lot of good baits. And lures like this, you know, you're going to use a bait. And some guys just use a bait, some guys just use a lure. I personally, on most of my sets, especially a dirt hole, will get more into depth on that in upcoming videos. But you're going to need bait, you're going to need lures. 
if you need a brand to buy, if just want a suggestion, Hoosier Trapper Supply, great stuff. Jeff Dunlap has great stuff. That's probably out of focus. Because I'm actually using my real camera instead of the GoPro. But here, just in case uh, anybody wants to get their feelings hurt, you know, there's Hall Bakers, Clint Locklear, Predator Control Group. They have great stuff. Um, Fleming Supply, I've got some of their stuff here. Uh, what else? I got Ausable. There's, you want to talk about overwhelming, get into base. I will tell you, the key on coyote trapping, if that's, and that, that's what everybody wants to do anymore. That's what's, that's what's sexy in the trapping world is catching coyotes. I'll give you a, a tip early on in this series. The key to catching coyotes is to be in a place where there's coyotes. You know, set on sign. We will get into that in future videos. This is going to be an ongoing series. And I'm trying not to venture too off, too far off topic. So you've got all that. Let's go back over. You've got your trapper's license. You've learned what you need to do in your state. You've got your release pole. you got your traps. you got your anchors. you got trap prep supplies. you got some baits and lures. What tools are you going to need to put these traps in the ground? Well, number one, you got to be able to dig your trap beds out. So, you're going to need a trowel. You know, this is a trowel I like to use if I'm making a bigger girl. You know, this is probably two and a half inch, maybe a three inch trowel the D handle on it. You can buy these at conventions. You can buy them from F&T. 10, 12 bucks, something like that. They're not ungodly expensive. If your wife likes to plant flowers, she's going to steal this from you, so you might as well buy two of them. But, very handy trowel to have. What I do the majority of my trap beds with and everything, this is an excellent tool to have. Different people make them, so I'm not going to say one way or the other. I think I bought mine from F&T. This is called a groundhog hammer. This is a three-in-one tool. You can drive your stakes in, you know, when you're using the earth anchors, you gotta have a stake driver. So you got your stake driver, the earth anchor clips into the bottom of it. You pound that in with the hammer. You can dig your trap bed out with that part. That's great for digging the trap bed out. And then if you're doing dirt holes, that little one and a half, maybe one and three quarter inch spoon right there is great for jamming in the ground and digging out a nice, perfect hole. And I mean, you can get deep with them in the right ground. And I mean, this is a great tool. Um, to highly recommend one of these they're about 20, 24 bucks. And if, if you've got, you can, you can make them fairly easy. I mean, all it is is a piece of pipe that's split and spread out here at the bottom. Weld you a piece of flat stock onto your hammer tip. And, you know, if you've got the ability to do some metal work, you can make them. So we got a hammer, or you can use, you know, you can use a trowel and you can use a uh, two pound, three pound little sledge, but you're going to need a hammer. You're going to need a sifter. This is just your typical standard sifter. You can make these two. You can get some hardware cloth, quarter inch, you know, wire mesh, and you can make it out of, you can buy some furring strips, you know, and then make your little box out of that and hammer in your 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 mess so it's again not a high dollar item but it's your sifter what that's for is once you get your trap bed dug out and your dirt hole dug out you throw your dirt in here and that's to go back over you sift it that keeps any rocks and sticks because you don't want anything big to be where the jaws of that trap are going to be because they will if a if a rock gets stuck in those jaws it's going to hold that trap open so you don't want any of that. You want anything that's near the trap to be sifted. You know, and that's 
and pretty tight. You know, it's just going to let small pieces of dirt through. So you definitely need a sifter. Snake driver. Again, you know, going back, I'll, uh, I'll show you this again. This is, uh, you know, pretty much top of the line snake driver. I broke quite a few snake drivers. This is one made by Tom Stalker. I'll give him a plug. You know, these are very nice, heavy duty stake drivers. Yeah, like I showed you earlier, you got your wolf fang stakes. That slides right in there. And then you take your cable on your stakes and you drive that down into the ground. And that's probably 12, 14 inch cable that I've got. Going back on those, on the on the stakes, and I'm sorry I kind of backtracked. I meant to say this earlier, but I did not, and I'm not going to redo this video. You can buy you can buy just the tips on these stakes. That's what I was saying. I get a hundred of them for forty four bucks. That's just the stake. That is not the cable. You know, you can buy a roll of three thirty second cable. And buy your uh, your swages, and you can hammer those on, and it's it's cheaper that way. Or you can buy them pre-made with the cable already on it. So however you want to, however you want to do it. Anyway, stake driver. If you use a rebar, you don't need one of these. But I will tell you guys, I highly recommend you go to a earth anchor, like the Freedom brand. Uh, Wolf Fangs, you've got Berkshires, you've got Super Stakes. The Super Stakes are really nice. Um, and there's, there's a lot of different ones. There's some that you can pull back out of the ground. And there's different, like I said, we will get into all that in a future episode. And, uh, you know, the last part of tools, that's not really even a tool, but once you've got all this stuff, you need a way to carry it around. So, you know, some type of bag, buckets, you know, I use a lot of buckets. I mean, I love buckets. I've got so many buckets anymore that it's, you know, it's ridiculous. I've got wax dirt buckets. We'll get into wax dirt in a future episode also. But buckets are great. So you need something to carry all your buckets in. The fourth thing that you're going to need is once you catch your animal, you're happy, you take your pictures, take your selfies, text your wife, text your husband, whatever. <laughs> you got to have a way to put that animal down. Multiple ways about it, and I'm not going to get into them. So, but for your own knowledge, you need to figure out how you're going to dispatch that animal as quick and humane as possible. You know, so, again, with getting with your State Trappers Association guys, if you ask a guy one-on-one -on -one how he dispatches an animal, he'll tell you. If you just send out a random message on Facebook, how do you dispatch your animals? You ain't going to get a reply because there's enough anti-trappers, anti-hunters out there that are trying to get ammunition against us that's something we generally don't talk about to people we don't know who they are. But if you get to know somebody, ask them their dispatch procedures. You can use a 22 rifle. You know, whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that. So, but you need to have a way to dispatch the animal. So now, you're up to the point. You've got your animals that you've caught in the traps. Your traps have been set. You've done everything right. You've got this great coyote. You've got a, a fox, a raccoon, whatever it may be. Now what? Well, you need to figure out. Some people like to just take the animals to a fur buyer on the carcass. There are still fur buyers that will buy fur on the carcass. You're not going to get as much for it, but if you don't want to get into fur handling, that is always an option if you have a buyer near you. You can take them home, throw them in the freezer until you get a good pile of them, take them to a fur buyer, throw them up there on the carcass. 
and they'll make you an offer, give you your money, you're happy, you go on your way. If that, if you want to get into fur handling or if that's not an option for you, <coughs> sorry fellas, I'm sick again, not the same gold, but a different gold. If that's not an option to you and you need to learn how to put your fur up, you're going to need, and I did not get any of this stuff prepped, so I, don't, I probably don't even have any of them in here. You're going to need a skinning knife or knives. I recommend having a couple. Um, you can go on F&T and, and yeah, you know, I'm giving these guys free plugs. You know, it's just it's the stuff that I use. Um, I'm not sponsored by anybody, so I don't care if you buy Weeby knives, if you buy whatever. But you know, ten, twelve bucks, you can buy a skinning knife from F and T. It's a Weeby knife, plastic handle. They are great, and I will tell you one thing that is priceless to me. Unless you want to spend a lot of time with a whetstone, I don't know if you can see this or not. These little work sharps are awesome. I use that. I use my Weeby skinning knives, and uh, there again, it, it's not much money to get into that. Um, so you're going to need a skinning knife, and you're going to need to know how to skin. I'm not going to get into that. We might next fall. I might do some fur handling videos, but. There is enough of that already out there. Coon Creek Outdoors, if you're not a subscriber to them, check him out. He's been doing this for years, and he has some great footage on fur handling. I mean, it's he, he's really, he's a good dude. But uh, Trapper Jay, I'm sure he's got some, some fur handling on there. I've not watched all his videos, but, uh, you know, he's another good one, you know, to give a couple guys plugs. Trapper Jay, Coffee Outdoors. Um, they've got good content so if it's something you're looking for subscribe to those guys too because they're they've got some good stuff so uh, skinning knife you got that you're gonna need a gambrel I don't have mine in here you guys should know what a gambrel is if not google it it's uh, just something to hang the animal from so you can have it up here to skin it out You'll need a gambrel, you're going to need a fleshing beam. Now, let me, uh, let me kind of adjust this camera a little bit. Oh, this tripod's stiff. My fleshing beam, that's it right here. This I made out of a PVC because whenever I, this was the first fleshing beam I've ever had and I've really liked it. I've never tried a wooden fleshing beam, and I'm probably going to buy one this year just to try it, now that I have a proper first hit. But uh, the way I made this, I took a coyote stretcher, and I laid it on a 10-inch piece of PVC pipe, which is hard to find, a piece of 10-inch PVC. I found one out in the field. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I laid it on there, I took a marker, and I kind of traced out, you know, the stretcher pattern on it and I cut it and kind of just rounded the edges and it has been, you know, the way I set mine up, I've got it on a two by four, I can fold it up, get it up out of the way and it's, it's, it's that works great for me. Um, you can buy, you can buy just like with the trapping starter kits, you can buy a fur handling starter kit. And man, this camera's kind of off. There we go. Let's go up there. Whew, this is getting long. Uh, sorry, guys, if it's long. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, you're going to need a way to flesh your animals out. So you're going to need a fleshing beam. You're going to need a fleshing knife. And I apologize because I have not cleaned any of my stuff at all, so it may have some pick on it. You're going to need a fleshing knife. This is a Weeby. Uh, it's the Weeby Elite, I think, flushing knife. You got a bunch of those too. The Weeby Elite's good. For a starter flushing knife, you can buy the 10 12 $15, this plain wood handle, plain Jane, no name, flushing knives, and use those. I mean, those work just fine. And uh, you'll need stretchers. 
again, yeah, everything, nothing's perfectly simple. You've got wood stretchers and you've got wire stretchers. And again, getting these, it's going to depend on what your budget is. And I'm telling you guys, I, I mean, I know I've, I've told you two or three times already. Go to conventions. Go to your state trappers association region meets because there's guys there selling this stuff a lot. And I mean, you can pay, you can get it for half the price, a quarter of the price sometimes, and you don't have to pay any shipping on it. So you can walk up there and cash and carry, and you can make a friend while you're there, meet some new people. So, what, what I want to conclude this with is cost-wise. What does it cost to get into trapping? Uh, you can't really put a number on it because what it costs for me to get into trapping and what it costs for somebody else to get in trapping is two different things. I mean, if you've got the means to go out and buy it, you start off with a dozen MB 550s to coyote trapped and you're not real worried about the money you can spend three four hundred dollars five hundred dollars on traps but if you've got fifty bucks to go out and buy a couple traps buy some anchors you, you can get started trapping for fifty bucks I mean you can get started trapping for probably less than that like I said if you get if your first step is to get in with the Trappers Association, let some guys know you're interested, I guarantee you, anybody that's around here, you know, I've got traps in my shed that I do not use now. And I would, I would loan them out, heck, I might give you some. I mean, I, just to get you started. But, and you can put some fur up with running four or five traps. I think, uh, I mentioned Coon Creek Outdoors, the cool thing that he started last year was he was going to the five trap challenge. He set out five traps to see how much fur he could get with five traps, only running five traps. And I might do something like that next year on one property. I ain't gonna do it on all of them because I wanna catch fur. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, to get into trapping, just to get started, you don't need a lot, guys. You need a few traps, you need some anchors, you need, the most thing you need is some knowledge. And that's, you're going to pick a lot of that up as you go. And uh, like I said, these videos, it's already getting long, so I'm going to cut this short. Yeah, I can't cut it short. It's already 38 minutes, and I, not a whole lot I can edit out of it. The biggest thing, guys, that you need to get started is the drive and the heart to do this, because you need to realize you, you're setting traps. You've got to get such a respect for that animal that... You know, every day you need to go out and check those traps. It doesn't matter if it's monsoon, pouring rain, five degrees below zero, you're tired, you just got off work, or if your only time that you can check traps is first thing in the morning and you gotta go to work afterwards, and it's pouring rain, guess what? There's an animal waiting in that trap that is there because you caught it. It's your responsibility to take care of that situation. So, the first thing you need before anything else is the heart and the drive to do this. Because it's not easy. It really is not. But once you get into it, guys, I promise you, you're going to be so hooked and you're going to love it so much that going out five below zero when it's, you know, two feet of snow on the ground and you're fighting your way through there and you walk out to that trap and you've got a coyote bouncing, you forget all about that cold and all the misery that you're going through. Because it's just, that's what you've set your mind to, that's what you've set your heart to, and you've accomplished a goal. Because trust me, it's not an easy feat to get a coyote that has this whole planet to walk on, to step on that little tiny square right there, and all the world that he can go and walk on, you got him to step right there by out thanking him. So, if you've got the drive to do this, you can be a very successful trapper. And that's where I'm gonna end this video. You guys, keep watching for the next one. Uh, we'll get into coil spring traps. Uh, give me some feedback. What do you guys, where should I go from here? 
should I go animal specific or should I go, you know, trap specific? You know, give tell me what you guys want to see. Give me your opinion because I'm I'm really like I said I've got some experience already. I want to do this from the view of somebody starting off. So please comment, subscribe, let me know what you guys want to see on future videos. Because I want to, like, in the next couple days, I want to start pushing these out. So, give me some feedback. Where should I go from here? So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that helps, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode.